Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 17th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jim today wrote about an increase in port 26 scans. And well, about a year ago, he noticed a similar increase. So interesting to have a repeat of this event. Looks like uh, the attacker is expecting a Telnet server on port 26 and then trying to uh, spread a version of the Satori botnet according to some of the strings being sent, which is one of those standard, hey, let's log into a Linux system with a weak password style botnets like Mirai and the like. The target here is most likely gigabit Ethernet a passive optical network interfaces. Uh, these modems or access points are often vulnerable. A reader on the DShield Slack channel actually pointed us uh, to a GitHub page that describes an exploit against one of these devices that will open up a Telnet server on port 26 and the attacks that Jim observed are somewhat consistent uh, with this uh, backdoor. So by default, the Telnet server is not running, but uh, with this exploit, it's possible to start it up on port 26. And what we are seeing now looks really more sort of like a secondary exploit than trying uh, to find these leftover enabled Telnet servers. It looks like some uh, Windows users had issues with February's patch update where it stalled around 24%. The reason was that you likely applied a servicing stack update first. That servicing stack update was released on Friday, so after the patch Tuesday update. But if you first released that and then applied the patch Tuesday update, then you ran into this hanging update. Servicing stack, that's the part of Windows Windows that's responsible for applying updates and apparently uh, there was a problem with that most recent release. If you ran into this problem, the fix is uh, to uninstall that servicing stack update and then reapply the February cumulative update. And well, after all the hoopla over solar winds, it shouldn't really be a surprise that the same actor also targeted similar companies. And turns out French company Centrion that also uh, makes a uh, software that monitors systems a little bit uh, like what solar winds does was apparently compromised as far back as 2017. The result is that several servers running Centrion software came with a backdoors and the French cyber security agency has now published an extensive report what this malware exactly did, how the backdoor worked and how to detect this in your systems. Overall, just glancing at it, it actually looks like a very straightforward and relatively simple backdoor, basically a web shell. It appears to be only really exploitable if the system is directly exposed to the internet. But given that this intrusion apparently goes back to 2017, we probably don't know everything yet that happened here. And if you are using the very popular Android file sharing application ShareIt, uh, you may want to consider uninstalling it. This application has been downloaded over a billion times, so certainly very popular. And Trend Micro now found a number of vulnerabilities in this application that can lead to remote code execution on phones that have the application installed. Problem here is that Trend Micro did report uh, this uh, these vulnerabilities to uh, the people behind uh, ShareIt, but so far after a few months of waiting, no fix has been made available, which really leaves uninstalling the application as your only real option. 
And if you're using Visual Studio Code on Linux or Windows, uh, make sure that you update the NPM extension if you're using it, because the old one had a remote code execution vulnerability. To trigger this vulnerability, the only thing you really had to do is open a malicious package.json file, and that would then trigger the code execution. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.